Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sebastian. Uh, I work at Google uh, in the greater Seattle, Seattle area and I volunteer at Kittitas High School, uh, which is in central Washington. Uh, so I'm a remote volunteer. Uh, the school is about two hours away from where I live, so I just connect through Nero and teach through there. Um, I heard about Teals uh, through Microsoft because uh, I was there before I switched jobs. Um, and mainly the main thing that brought me to Teals, I guess there are two things. Uh, the main thing is uh, teaching, I feel like, is the most profound way you can have an impact um, on the next generation, um, especially when I think about the ways that educators have helped me in my life. So this is sort of a way of paying that forward. And um, I guess secondly, just being able to create lecture content and you know deliver it to a group of students and you know helping people one on one is a pretty valuable skill um, for most careers. So uh, that's sort of the more pragmatic angle for that. A site that lets you uh, build quizzes. Um, and on the free tier, uh, which is what I use, it's essentially just multiple choice questions. Um, so this is the Kahoot homepage right now. Um, if you just search um, search for Kahoot, you can find a page and it'll you can create an account. Um, they have a single sign-on option, so if you have like a, a Google or a Microsoft account, it's really easy to make an account with Kahoot. Um, and eventually you'll get to this dashboard um, type of page. And from here you can see the codes that you have made or you can create a new one. So I'm just going to open one that I have made before. And you can see the details of this particular Kahoot. Uh, so there are 12 questions um, and each of these questions is a multiple choice. So if I click into the first one, um, you can see the text of the question over here. Um, which of the following cannot be iterated through with the for each loop? And then the possible responses are here below. And you can see there's a green check mark next to the response that I've marked as correct. Um, in addition, you have an amount of time that you can give for each question. So for this one, students will have 20 seconds to answer that question. And then the idea behind Kahoot is that you just go one by one, um, go through each question. The students will be able to submit their answer. Um, after each question, you'll see the results. Um, and they'll be uh, somewhat anonymized. Like you're not going to see who got each one right one by one, uh, but you will see a score after each result that shows you who's in the lead, um, who's answered the most questions correctly, and who's answered the quickest. Um, what else? So if you if I scroll down to the bottom, there are some questions here which um, have images. Um, so that's another feature of Kahoot, is that you can create an image and then upload it. And then when the quiz question gets shown, the image will get shown as well. Uh, so this is pretty useful for um, like coding examples. Say I write a program and then I ask a question about that program. Um, I can have the, I can type this up in REPL or some other environment, take a screenshot, upload it to Kahoot, and then I have uh, my question over here. Cool. So, um, a little bit about the logistics of Kahoot. So you can create your own quiz uh, just by hitting the Create button, or you can find an existing quiz by uh, going over to Discover. And like you can just type in whatever you're looking for. Um, and so you can see there's a sort of community of um, people making different Kahoot quizzes, and you can just grab one that you like. Um, or if you only like some of the questions, um, you can go over to the, um, 
So if you find a quiz that you like, uh, but you want to adjust it, like you want to remove some questions or add some more questions, or maybe the questions themselves need some refinement, uh, you can use this duplicate. And that will you know, fork or copy or whatever term you want to use. Um, you'll have your own Kahoot, which is just a copy of the one that you got. And then you can go edit that one yourself. Um, if you want to administer a quiz, um, there's a play button over here. So let me just click that right now. Um, you'll end up on the screen. Um, so you'll be given this pin or the seven digit number. Um, your students will have their own um, desktops or phones or whatever, whatever form factor you have in your classroom. Um, each of your students will join using this pin, they'll go to this website, kahoot.it, enter the number, and then they'll be um, in the game. So they'll show up down at the bottom where it says zero players, and your students will be able to enter their own names. Um, so if you want to encourage them to be goofy or creative or whatever, you can have them make up their own names. Um, and then you can, when everyone's joined, you hit start. And then the quiz just goes, you know, question by question. The UI is pretty fluid. Uh, I'm not going to walk through it right now, but um, your screen will show the question and the responses. The students will just see buttons on their side that correspond to the responses. So the students will be able to, they will need to see your screen in order to take the quiz. Uh, so if you're using something like Nero, you'll want to project uh, the screen that I'm projecting right now. Um, and after you start the quiz, uh, you'll go question by question. Um, you'll get a pulse of where students are at, um, just based on how many get the right answer, how quickly they can answer. Um, you will get like a graph of who answered each question, um, although you won't know who specifically answered each one. You'll have to infer that from the scores that they show, um, the running scores of who's doing the best. One tip I would give, so this is sort of common for all formative assessments um, that are like a competition, like competition-based things is that the students who are like a bit slower or around the low achieving end, uh, they might like get checked out um, if they find that the quiz is too difficult, like they're just getting everything wrong and they'll feel discouraged and they might like start sandbagging or just like choosing random things. Um, that might be the case. So you like you should have some plan on hand for like how you would want to address that. Um, there might be a couple ways to do that. Uh, one easy thing I would suggest is um, adjusting the time limits on your questions. So um, one problem that I have is that I write a question and then I think, oh, this is so easy. Uh, students can do this in 30 seconds, no problem. Um, but I'm totally biased because I wrote the question myself. Um, so you know, you can always adjust the timer so it'll give a minute or 90 seconds or two minutes. And it's not really a problem because if everyone answers quickly, then you're just gonna move on anyway. So if all the students answer within 15, 15 seconds, you're just gonna move on to the results and move on to the next question. Uh, it's not gonna wait until the time that you've allotted. Uh, but the benefit is that this will give those like slower readers um, some time to process the question, look at each response, and they won't feel as pressured uh, to answer quickly. Um, it might also be helpful to like have some low-hanging fruit questions. Like say, for example, you have a tough question, you use that as an opportunity to explain the content behind that question, and then you can follow it up with a similar question um, that, you know, that'll give you a good reference um, uh, a good signal into whether the explanation you just gave was helpful or not.